。接着，请王曙君院长主持讨论环节。Next, we invite Dean Wang Shujun to moderate the discussion session. So my, may I first ask the question, uh, uh, Professor, uh, Professor Kirsten uh, Austell, how do you, how do you, um, are your school, Rice University, implement the medical humanities for telehealth in your university? Thank you. Um, in, in our university, the focus is really on uh, teaching future healthcare professionals what medical humanities is and how to integrate it into all kinds of technology development. So that includes working with engineering students, even though they're not going to become medical doctors, because they're designing biomedical technologies that are going to be used in healthcare. So they need to understand the humanity of the patient and the humanity of the doctor in order to imagine how the design of their technology may impact that humanity down the line and think about that, importantly, at the very beginning of the design process. So in our view, emphasizing the humanity of medicine is something in both engineering and pre-medical education that has to start at the very beginning of the process but also carry through all the way because it's very easy once you get in the development process for technology or the implementation of using a technology to focus on that, on the technological considerations and to consider all of the many challenges that may be logistical but that still include people. And so their humanity is something that has to be continuously returned to. Now that's a very, very important uh, idea because I, I think the education has to be along with the development of telehealth. Okay, okay, follow the questions that because you want to implement the old medical education into integrate with the humanity and also translate to the clinical practice. I, I think that not only the infrastructure and the, the program design, also the, the faculty development also very important. I just wonder in, in Rice, the university, how to make the faculty development to integrate this kind of uh, technology and the driven the medical education. Yeah. Thank you. Um, in, in my view, the best way to do this is through problem-based practices. So in other words, part of it is about introducing new concepts and new methods, new ways of thinking. But the best way for that to be truly understood and integrated is for it to be part of existing courses. So if you're teaching anatomy, the anatomy of the patient is that of a human being. Right? And so there are ways to bring in the humanity, even in you know, a really fundamental traditional course like that, that, that happens at the very beginning. But if you're teaching doctor-patient communication, for example, or breaking bad news, what is the role of technology in thinking about how those conversations may play differently? So you may start with how you've taught that before, but then bring in the question of how does having technology in that dynamic change the questions you have to ask about the humanity. So you, you, you layer it in at every level, and that way it's integrated into the thinking. If you teach it as a separate add-on, it's not integrated, so it won't stick in the same way, and it won't also carry through all the way to practicing professionals. Yeah, very good answer. Another question? Hey, hold me, hold me. Yeah, following this question, because in your speech, you, you mentioned about uh, how we uh, measure caring. Instead of a quantitative uh, um, 
kind of measure or other measure. I, uh, my question would be the first one, the, the methodology to, to measure caring. The second question would be that how do you ensure the caring uh, quality uh, put into the medical education curriculum? Thank you. It's, it's a wonderful question because it's one, caring and humanity are not easy things to measure. And the more that we try to measure them, the more that we risk actually turning them into something else. We don't want to do that, right? In my view, the best way to understand that is to ask the person who is supposed to be cared for. Sometimes that's the clinician if your focus is on the humanity of the provider. When you introduce a new technology and, a, and new healthcare providers have to be using it, how do they perceive its integration into their day-to-day -day workflow? Does it lead to burnout? Does it actually improve their work and make it easier and make it um, more smooth to connect with patients? Or does it actually just create a lot of friction? They're the ones who know. So you can measure it that way, and it's qualitative, not quantitative, but you can still get valid information that way. The same is true with patients. If what you're concerned about is whether they're experiencing empathy or whether they feel cared for as a person rather than as a data set, then you have to ask them. They, they're the ones who know. So it's not going to result smoothly in simple quantitative data, but it is going to give you the information that you need. Any further questions? Okay, uh, our president, Lee. I want to ask you, Cai Zuren, this is in the hospital. I actually think that we were pushing the government for a few years ago, like Saba QK, that was to put all the big hospitals and the small hospitals together. 然后现在一下子要推到家里边哈，我只是在想问说，从你的实务经验看，因为中间其实还有一关叫做 community 的 nursing facility， 昨天我们有稍微讨论一下这个，我想从您的实务经验来看呢，从医院然后直接要到家，中间需不需要有一些 intermediate 会比较好，在整个制度设计上面？啊，谢谢校长。其实您提的问题是我们在实务当中马上，就是你找那个讲到 key point， 就是说其实现在我们在实务做 H H 的过程当中，虽然本院主要就是 bypass 这个机构的这一端，哈，主要是在转就是居家跟急诊，其实后后来我们实务还是把居家的病人还是跑到让他来急诊一趟。因为就是像您说的，就是这些病人其实让他到家里去做急症的照顾，当中有一些我们必须要能够厘清，或是要很有把握，或挑挑到很合适的患者，或是我们医师跟护理亲自跟病人都有一些互动，有一些经验之后，我们才安心让他变成真正的 H H 个案。所以，变成说急诊这个是一个重要的一个把关跟一个沟通的桥梁。当时病人的状况、家属能不能接受，然后大家把权利义务讲清楚。那这样其实好像现状能够有这个急诊的一个 bypass。那这样其实，在急诊好的一个 evaluation 之后，其实大概 H H 个案上照顾上其实就会顺很多。好，非常谢谢谢谢蔡主任，因为我们昨天听到那个。听到那个 Mayo Clinic， 他们他们呃 Professor m i n i a c h 他讲说，他们还用 AI 来选病人，他们用 AI 选到的那个病人，他能够适合 H A H 的时候，他才让他能够 dis 到 discharge， 然后来再来照顾，甚至他放在那个 hotel。所以我相信台湾在这个过程当中都需要非常非常多的一些经验。那我相信我们在这个做的这个在 under 这个 policy 下面，应该可以越来越完整，而且大家也非常好。非常好的那个 sharing 的经验。那非常谢谢。啊、uh, ，Thank you very much for the two speakers in. 呃、uh, ，not four four speakers in this section. Well, I will end this section and we have a break. 啊、uh, ，so 我们要等到什么时候？对 ，coffee break， 然后到。
哦，那大家还有 physical needs， 所以大家可能速度要快一点。我们有十分钟的 break， 谢谢大家，谢谢。谢谢王院长的引导，让大家有更深入的交流。Thank you, Dean Wang, for facilitating a deeper exchange among the attendees. 现在是十分钟的中场休息时间，场外备有点心，欢迎前往取用，并请贵宾前往贵宾室，并请各位嘉宾于十点五十。